Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to talk about Pat Cipollone getting a subpoena from the federal grand jury and what that means and uh, the unique situation that it presents. So Cipollone's already talked to the hearing, right? Already provided testimony there. But there were times when he said privilege, you know, invoking executive privilege, limiting the scope of what he feels he can talk about. And if you look back at the testimony, almost all of it had to do with one thing and one thing in particular. Trump's exact words. We don't talk about Trump out. He, he gave everything else that he could. He didn't provide that information. Now, DOJ is behind the subpoena. It's not Congress. One of the reasons executive privilege exists is to help maintain the separation of powers. DOJ is part of the executive. So there, there's something unique there. Um, in a normal timeline, in a timeline that doesn't include the Department of Justi Justice investigating a former president, um, it's the Department of Justice that is making the argument that people like Cipollone don't have to testify. They're normally defending privilege. This subpoena suggests that they're going to try to get through it. Now, given the fact that it is the Department of Justice that is normally defending privilege, they know the arguments. They created most of them. They know what Cipollone's attorneys are going to say. They also know how to get through them. My understanding is that at this point, there are conversations, discussions, negotiations going on about what Cipollone can say. If you really kind of think about it, DOJ has a couple of routes they can go. One is ask him about stuff that isn't within the scope of his duties. Therefore, executive privilege doesn't apply. That's what you got at the hearing. The other is to say that if there's crime, there's no privilege, right? Um, now, the thing with that is that they might be willing to allow Cipollone to draw that line. When you look at his testimony from the hearing, this wasn't somebody who was hiding behind the concept of executive privilege. This was somebody who felt restricted by it, who wanted to provide more information, but didn't because felt ethically bound by this concept. If that concept is pierced, if it is removed, um, if the scope of what he is ethically allowed to talk about is widened, I, I think that Cipollone would be willing to provide information and draw the ethical line accurately as far as this is something that might be related to a crime, this isn't. Um, but we'll have to see how that plays out. The other thing that this does is that it shows without a doubt DOJ is looking at Trump. There's no other reason to uh, talk to Cipollone. None. None. Everything else could be gathered by other people. Fighting the privilege claim is a fight that they would only need. They'd only need to undertake that if they were trying to get to Trump. Everybody else, everything else that's going on there, they don't need him. This subpoena is very indicative of a Department of Justice that is looking into the Oval Office. Um, so there are reports suggesting that this fight over privilege could take a really, really long time, months. I don't know that that's how this is going to play out. 
it, it seems to me that if DOJ is smart, they would recognize they would recognize him as a witness that wants to provide information, and they just have to give him the mechanisms that allows him to do it in a way that is ethical by by his standards. Um, I don't think that's going to be that hard. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe Cipollone is hiding behind it, but that doesn't. That's not my read. That's not what I saw in, in the testimony. So, either way, this is something to continue to watch, and this is going to be the the real thing that kind of breaks through the wall to get inside that inner circle with all of Trump's people. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.